Welcome to this edition of MusicRoundtable.com. This is MJ Hancock, and MusicRoundtable.com is a TV show that helps organize the Houston music community and the local communi communities across uh, the, the nation and let people know who's touring and what CDs are coming out and how did bands form and whether or not bands are looking for new members. And tonight we have a special guest with us. This is Christian Anarchy from The Hates. Hi, Christian. Thanks for joining us tonight. Glad to be here. Awesome. I wanted to find out, how is it that you uh, came to form the band The Hates? After seeing the Ramones back in 1976 over at Liberty Hall. Uh-huh. What happened? You saw the Ramones and you decided that punk was it for you? Oh, or? yeah. I just I said, I had to get in on that. That's just too much fun. <laughs> okay. So when did you, you actually formed in 78? Right. And you formed The Hates. Well, actually, officially, we... we in 78, we performed live. I was doing it a year before that. Were you still in high school in the 70s? Or? No, I was, I was 21 at the time. So you were already out of school, right. and did you think this was going to be your life? No, I, I was actually sh shocked because I was not a musician at the time. I went got a guitar, and I feel like I went from grabbing a guitar to trying to go the full game of writing songs and forming a band. So I guess what was kind of nice was uh, being at the right place at the right time to find some inspiration and a direction to go in. So did you, um, when you formed the Hates, did you think that you were going to tour? No, I didn't. No? I, I guess I just kind of didn't really feel that ambitious about the whole thing. I, I didn't think I was going to be recording and playing and all this kind of stuff. So did you ever tour with the Hates? Yes, we did. We went out to California. We, uh, we did uh, Texas, Arizona, and California. And what was the reception? California was great, especially San Diego. Los Angeles. San Francisco was good too. Were you ever signed to a major label? No, we we're still considered what's called an unsigned band. Everything has still been just uh, self-released. I see. So do you have a website for The Hates? www.thehates.com Okay, and do you all write your own music? Yes, I'm the writer, singer, guitarist in the band, the trio, and the bass band drum. And all the time, has it always been a trio? Or yes, it's yeah. always been a trio. So you actually own the band, I suppose. Right, yeah. I'm the only original member. There's been there's been many uh, personal changes in the band. Bands come and go, uh, band members come and go, but the hates always stay. Solid. So what do you, what's the hates up to now? Not much, just an occasional gig here and there. We, uh, our last CD came out in 1995, but uh, my producer Dale Brooks feels like he wants to take the recordings that we did last year and make another full length CD and we shot some videos, so it might be a combination of DVD slash CD. Awesome. Well, it's going to have to be because this market nowadays, the, the new buying market is all about the DVD and the book and whatnot and in the did, music industry. And we just came back from Wales uh -huh. and we shot a video with the Bishop Moore School Choir of our latest song called Game Is Now. Wow. So you were touring in Wales or you went there to do family business or? It was kind of a slash vacation maybe of something like that would happen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. So right now, are the Hates performing in the Houston area? No. Y'all aren't performing? No. They're just recording in the studio? Or? No, we're just practicing. You're just practicing. Where in Houston, I, I've noticed a lot more uh, punk looking like uh, uh, outfits, clothing and whatnot in the Montrose area. Where else in Houston do you find the punk scene? Where else you find the punk scene? <laughs> I don't think there's any certain set place. But uh, I guess you can, I guess like what you make you think about monsters, it just seems like there's always an exhibition of just other people who choose to kind of dress up punk like and walk up and down monsters. But I don't think that's the norm. I think it's just spread everywhere. It's just out in the suburbs as well. You'd be surprised when you, when, you, when you play a show, you talk to somebody who just looks dressed punk to the teeth, and you find out they're from some little town outside of Houston. That's not that unusual. I found that also. <laughs> No, that's not that unusual. Um, when I started seeing more and more punk dressed people down in the, the Montrose area, I started inquiring as to what was going on, and there's apparently a new label that's signing punk bands in, that, uh, in the Houston area. So I was wondering if it's an underground label, that's no relationship to you? Or... No, I wasn't aware of that. Okay. So, the hates right now are in studio, just practicing. They're not recording. So how many CDs do you all have out? One. We had one out in 95, and then after we released a cassette that previously in 1991, a German label re-released it. Yeah. So I guess you could say we have two CDs out, but they were both out of print. Do, do punk 
Do bands get requests for other people to, to record their music? Yeah, uh, Slayer uh, actually has some Texas bands and uh, they, did, they did a punk CD and they actually got some Texas uh, bands and stuff like that on there. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I know like Johnny Rotten and Sex Pistols did I Did It My Way, which was I think an Elsa Daka song, so they licensed that song. Uh, yeah, there, 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 there seems to be a tendency a lot of that, you know. Uh, I guess people don't think of it, but punk is very pop oriented, so you'll find a lot of people do a punk rock version of a pop song. Or something. I mean, there's been everything now, you know, like punk rock uh, compilation of people doing nothing but uh, disco songs or something like that. You'd be surprised at the weird angles they're doing sometimes. Okay. Well, you've given me a uh, bumper sticker here, and it's on my jacket. If the cameraman wants to zoom in, there's three people on the jack on the uh, bumper sticker. Obviously, this guy here with the mohawk is you. Right. Then you've got two other bandmates. Who are the other bandmates? That's uh, Dave Deviant. Okay. And Joel Moore on drums. Okay. And the three of you guys are not performing, so right now people cannot see you live. No. I mean, if you want me, if I, if I can be so bold, say this. The only thing I can suggest is if you want to go to our website and you'll see if we're listed. Some show dates. Exactly. Okay. That's all we can and as far as is getting a hold of one of your CDs, do you all have arrangements for that? We sell them at the shows. Oh, at the shows. T-shirts and CDs and so on. Very cool. So what does an audience for you look like when you go into a, a show? What, what kind of people come to your shows? Well, one thing I miss is it seems like we play bars mostly now. And I used to like it when we were playing all ages shows. It was great when we had like young kids, but so now it's kind of more of an older crowd. An older crowd. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, the film they're showing down in the Montrose called uh, Looking for a Thrill? No. Uh, but you know the Thrill label, the Thrill Seekers label? No. Um, they've got a lot of punk bands on there that, that were doing interviews, kind of similar to what you're talking about. And they had a similar uh, thing, is that it's, it's amazing who all listens to punk. It's kind of a variety. It's not it's not necessarily people that don't like society. It's just great music, and that's why they listen to it. Well, that's why I feel great being around now, because people don't realize this, but after we came out, uh, by 1979, people were saying punk was dead. And we had such a hard time at, at the beginning of the 80s trying to play it, and now it's just like... There's just been such a research for punk rock. Oh, yeah. It's just great. Now. I mean, that's why I want to be around now to, to try to enjoy that. Very cool. So you were saying earlier that you, you had a day job all through, and you're retired now? I'm retired. I used to work for the city for 24 years. And so I've been doing some guitar lessons. Okay. And as far as, um, I, I'm, I'm sure there's some people out there watching the interview who want to know, do you do your own hair, or do you have someone who does it for you? No, my ex-wife. Does she uh, does the coloring and the cutting and the uh, right. and does it does it come down or this is how it is 24 well, hours? I like to keep it up all the time. You know, yeah. Nice. I opened myself up for that, didn't I? <laughs> well, how did it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, uh, you want to turn around and let the camera see? Uh, it's got the. It's a beautiful. It's an incredible color. This color you? actually glows on a black light. What do you call the color? It's called uh, Orange Crush. What is your original hair color? It's brown. It is? So they bleach it out first and then dye yeah. it? Yeah. And how often do you have to have your mohawk now? Uh, color wise? Yeah. It fades very quickly, at least uh, every two weeks. Is that right? Yeah. It gives me an opportunity just to change its color. How long have you had a mohawk? Since 1987. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So you were working for a day job while you had your mohawk? Yeah. Yes, I did. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, I'm very, very fortunate. Uh, to be able to not be just a weekend warrior and actually have my hairstyle all day and 24-7, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, uh, we've got about a minute left, and I was just wondering what's next for the Hates. What are y'all looking at doing? Just really hoping to see us uh, finally get another CD. I mean, because like I said, the last time was 1995, and this time, uh, the way things are now, is really looking forward to, I really love this Game is Ned video, which we've got out with the CD. People can see that, and we also had a video we did previously called "Gonna Get This Tonight." They're both done nice. Australian slang, rhyming slang. Nice. So is it kind of a rap thing going on? No, it's just um, uh, some people might not be acquainted, but there's uh, there's a thing called Cockney slang from the east end of London. Okay, yeah. So I thought I'd be a little more obscure and go with Australian rhyming slang. Nice. Very nice. Well, today my guest has been Christian Anarchy from the Hates. And we really appreciate you coming in. This has been fantastic to find out what's going on in the punk scene and what's going on with the hates. And we look forward to seeing you in the, in the, uh, on the circuit and playing the clubs. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>